Hello, everybody, and welcome back into another Prospect Corner here at the Hockey Writers. I am your host, Matthew Zator, and of course, joined in by my co-host, Peter Barracchini and Devin Little. You know, we've been off for, uh, what, a couple weeks? And, it's been uh, too it's long, been, yeah. It's been yeah. too long. Yeah. It's been crazy. <laughs> As you can see, I've got a new, a bit of a new setup here. I, I did a big move. I'm into a new place, so uh, a little bit of a different uh, different look behind me here, but uh Happy to be back talking prospects and uh, well, well, let's, let's start it with, uh, with the morning skate, like we always do uh, on this show and on any other show on the hockey writers that uh, morning skate newsletter delivered to your inbox Monday to Friday, jam packed with the best hockey stuff on the planet, daily dose of the latest news, rumors, history, funnies, quizzes, lots of hockey fun and information brought to you every, not every day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday right now, uh, but it will be every day again, once the season starts. You'll see that link in the description. Uh, not much news going on, but uh, Kyle and his team seem to find some stuff to talk about in the morning skate. So uh, Jeff, definitely check that out. All right, let's get moving on. Uh, the stuff that is happening in the prospect world right now is uh, Holinka Gretzky. Uh, the Holinka Gretzky tournament is um, still going on. It's into the semifinals. Um, it's going on today, I believe. And uh, when we're recording today, that is. Um, tomorrow, when you're watching it, there'll be stuff happening and or happen. Um, so let's start off with, off with that. Uh, Peter, um, we'll start with you. Uh, what players have stood out in this tournament so far? Lots of 2023 draft picks. I mean, that stacked draft is already yeah. we're starting to see the players. Um, who has stood out to you? I mean, the short answer is everyone. Um, <laughs> I mean, like I, I like I know we got like I could go on and on about all the prospects that have done extremely well and looking at the top 10 in scoring. Six out of the ten are Canadian, two Swedes, one Czech, one from Czechia, um, Edward Chalet, and Aaron Kiviharyu, who's up for next year's draft. So nine out of the ten are for this year's draft, and it's just absolutely phenomenal. I mean, I could go down the list and say how great the Jaeger Benson Gauthier line has been. Callum Ritchie with his playmaking, uh, Cameron Allen, who's my top defender in this draft class at the moment. Theo Lindstein right behind him. Um, as I mentioned previously, Chalet, who's like really stood tall and has been leading Czechia for, for them at this tournament. It really is astonishing. I mean, even going into like afterwards outside the top 10, it's just absolutely phenomenal with the talent there. So um, if I had to pick one, it would probably be, you know, Braden Yeager right away uh just his shot his offensive instincts the way that he's able to just get into the zone and just unleash that wicked shot I mean it, it's been snipe after snipe with him in this tournament and I've just been absolutely phenomenal or just absolutely happy with his performance and there's a reason why I had him fifth overall that shot is the main reason why and he's just going to exceed uh, continuously at this tournament and even throughout the season he's going to score a bunch of goals this season yeah hey, well of course he's he's on the leaderboard right now <laughs> for scoring <Yeah. laughs> so i mean he, he's definitely stood out uh in this tournament so far Devin, uh what have you seen from this alinka gretzky tournament um there's always guys that stand out uh, in this in this one you always talk about him in draft profiles whenever uh, we get to them um who do you have as someone that's standing out in this tournament so far? Well, I, I just need to put my two cents in on Braden Yeager because yeah, he's, uh, he's quite, he's quite the standout right now. Uh, obviously his name is a name that's already been out there for the 2023 Jeff class. Uh, you know, I've seen him everywhere from uh, fifth to 12th, uh, depending on, you know, like these early, uh, early rankings. So his name is already out there, but Holy cow is this dude, uh, a force to be reckoned with right now in this tournament um, cannot understate what Jaeger's doing for the Canadians. And then I'm also going to highlight the number two guy on the scoring list, which would be Caleb Ritchie uh, showing good, uh, good hands, good offensive awareness with a six assists in three games. Um, I think all in all, just that entire Canadian team is just explosive as all mm. get out and looking they just look like a lot of fun. Like they it looks oh, yeah. like they are fun to watch and it looks like they are having fun on the ice. And in that, you know, if, if you're having fun and you're, uh, you're dominating and pretty much every game you're playing, uh, that's, I mean, like I said, it's exciting to watch. So, um, to, uh, overgeneralize the entire Canadian team is really impressing me. And, uh, I'm expecting them to, uh, you know, spoiler alert, I'm expecting them to get a medal in this tournament. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I mean, that's Canada is usually one of the stronger teams. Doesn't matter what tournament they're in. Uh, World Juniors, we'll talk about in a sec. Uh, even without guys that aren't gonna, that are go, not going to go, they're still going to be a strong team. I mean, they could always put it together, maybe two or three good teams, <laughs> whatever they. So uh, yeah, Canada's for sure um, exciting to watch in this tournament. They have been um, a lot, so that that's 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 really good. Let's talk about some of the results that have happened already. I mean, we're in the semifinals. Uh, Canada, Finland is the first one. Sweden and Czechia is the second. Um, they're both in the semis. USA is fighting for fifth, uh, which is, of course, not a medal position. Um, Devin, we'll start with you. Are you surprised with any of this, these results so far? I mean, uh, is there anything that's shocked you uh, with what's happened in this tournament? Um, yes and no. Uh because you know we'll we'll uh i'm the resident american here so i'll talk about the states for a second um <laughs> uh you know come, you know we just talked about how the canadians have all this talent and all these guys that look like they're you know potentially going to be top 30 top 20 maybe even top 10 picks in the in next year's draft uh the states don't necessarily have that wealth of talent on their team now mind you they do have plenty of good kids on there but you know, even just looking at their goaltending, it's it's not at the caliber of uh, other teams in this tournament. And even, you know, let's let's kind of expand the scale here, because when we talk about the Americans in the Olympics, when we talk about them in the world juniors, pretty much every international competition, uh, the Americans play a certain way. If they're going to be successful, they usually kind of have to have a, uh, a good combination of skill, speed and grit. And if they don't have all those things, you know, firing, then they usually don't fare well. Um, and I think that uh, you're kind of seeing that in this, this uh, Helenka Gretzky tournament. Um, going outside of the States, uh, like I said, not a ton of surprises because Canada's, <laughs> I'll say it, Canada's whipping ass. It does not surprise <laughs> me at all. Um <laughs> The Swedes are doing what the Swedes do. They're playing a good game. They've got some ta- they've got some really good talent on that team that I'll highlight here in a little bit. Um, and even like uh, Czechia and Slovakia, they've got some good guys in there that are uh, showing up and showing well. Um, and, you know, we've talked about this before um, on the show too. You can never count out Finland. Yeah. Um, no matter what tournament they're playing in, you can't count out the Finns. So um, am I surprised? Yes and no. But uh yeah, I, 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 like I said about the states, it's it's uh, I just don't think that the uh, the wealth of talent was there for them to keep up with uh, some of the other teams in this tournament. Yeah, well, you look at look at Czechia. I mean, being in there, I I found that a little bit of a surprise because they're not usually one of the ones that are in, you know, higher up in there. But uh, yeah. they're there. They're playing at Sweden, so uh, we'll see what happens there. Peter, what do you think about the results so far? Are you surprised with anything that's happened uh, in this tournament yet? Yeah, I, I, and going back to the last few last few tournaments, the U.S. really hasn't fared well at this one compared to like they do at the U18s where that's their, you know, bread and butter main powerhouse roster. And granted, like, like Devin said, they had great players. They have Quinton Musty. They had William Whitelaw who have been really, really great for them at the tournament, but they're defensive play discipline really played a factor in them playing for fifth overall. Yeah. I, I mean, it has shown in the games where they have been taking careless penalties, but I mean, check you with the goaltending from Michael Harabo. I think he, they've been fantastic and I'm a big fan of Finland making some noise as always, because they're always intense, always in your face. They play that run and gun style, but they're also very physical. Um, case in point, Casper Haltonen, very, very physical, powerful, booming shot. Emilio Arventi is really looking like a top tier first round pick this uh, coming draft. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I I probably expected the tournament to be with these final four because the U.S. just kept going down and down and down and it just didn't quite work out. But for this final four, I, I think this is mainly what, I had in mind going towards the end of this tournament. Yeah. Well, you look at Canada and I mean, Canada and Finland, it's, it looks like it's going to be Canada going for for that one. But again, like, Mm -hmm. like you can't count out the Finns. They're always those plucky Finns. Those guys that just keep, they have such a great system uh, that they always play. And uh, teams always have 
issues playing against them. So you never can count them out for sure. It doesn't matter what tournament they're in, what players they've got in the team. Um, they're always, they're always one to watch for sure. Let's move on to some, you know, 2023 draft talk. I mean, there's lots of prospects in here that are eligible for the 2023 draft. Um, Peter, uh, do you have anyone that's risen their stock? Um, I mean, this is very early, but uh, is there anyone that's kind of already gotten on the scouts uh, radar as being at or higher up when, before this turn rather than before this tournament started? Yeah, during the tournament, I talked with or like I made a comment towards Derek Newmeyer about Andrew Crystal and how I thought that he's been very not his overall play with the Kelowna Rockets because the, he did put up 69 points last season. So him overall is not underrated, but I thought he was a very underrated player playing in a depth role for Team Canada. But we're showing what's so great about him. You know, he's again, I mentioned he was one of the top 10 scorers with five points in three games. The playmaking, the hands, the awareness, the ability to get to the middle of the ice, it's all on display. And I've just been really fascinated with him. I saw him quite a bit last season, not a whole lot, but seeing him more with this tournament, I'm a really big fan of Andrew Crystal. Yeah, that's a definite name to, to watch moving forward. I mean, like you say, this this draft is so stacked. I mean, there's so many, mm-hmm. so many guys that you're going to be able to talk about for sure. Devin, uh, do you have someone that you want to kind of point out as being a guy that's already risen in stock very early on here? Yeah, I got two. Uh, sticking with the Canadians to start here, uh, defenseman Cameron Allen has certainly stood out. Um, and he's someone that uh, I think in the early going here, you look at as maybe being the top defenseman in the class. And he uh, is looking like it, at least in this tournament. And uh you know, he's producing, he's playing with some, some uh, elite talent or at least some, some projected elite talent here in this tournament and he's faring well. And that's what you want to see out of a, uh, out of a, uh, out of a prospect that um, is, is in a, he's a defenseman and he's in a class that is going to be uh, very much touted for its forward talent. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah. for him to stand out as a defenseman, I think that's important for him. Um, and then the other guy I want to shout out uh, is Swedish forward Otto Stenberg. Uh, solid seven points in three games for the Swedes. Um, and he is uh, their leading scorer by two points. Um, he's right up there with uh, Caleb Ritchie and Braden Yeager's turn as, as far as uh, production is concerned, uh, just one point behind both of them. And I think he's uh, he's looking like a almost like a prototypical Swedish pro, uh, prospect where he's he's uh, he's able to produce, he's certainly got all the skill in the world. Um, and he just competes, you know, he's, he's looking like a, uh, he's, he's, he's a, if you weren't aware of his name before, I think that this tournament is, is almost like a coming out party in terms of just putting his name on the map. Um, it's, it takes a lot to stand out amongst this crowd. You know, we're talking about all these names, we're talking about Brady Yeager, we're talking about Caden Ritchie, so on and so forth. And there's Otto Stenberg right up there with the best of them. So, um, you expect that. Sweden always puts out a good prospect or two that ends up being yeah. towards the uh, the top end of the uh, draft class, whether it's a LaCara Mackey or um, a Lucas Raymond type of guy. But it uh, looks like Stenberg might be uh, announcing himself as as a real, you know, real name to watch as we start to really get into this uh, this 2023 draft class. Well, I mean, Sweden always, yeah, like you said, they always have someone that's going <laughs> to impress in that first round uh, for sure. So and like you said, defensemen aren't the big draw in this uh, class, but uh, have a guy like, uh, you know, have, have someone actually standing out is, is great uh, amongst a class that's filled with great forwards. So we'll, we'll be watching him closely. That's for sure. All right, let's get to some predictions. We always do this. Uh, who will eventually take home gold and bronze? I mean, we'll say silver. So we'll go gold, silver, and bronze. I mean, obviously if you say there's a gold, so say who's in the final and uh, who's going to get the medal. So we'll start with you, Devin. I feel like whenever I'm on the spot, when it comes to international competitions, this is my, my gold medal round. So I'm just going to stick with it. Uh, Canada for Sweden in the gold medal round. Uh, I got to go with Canada because Holy cow. Uh, that's a good <laughs> score. I'm here with my Canadian friends, so I'm not going to go out go against you guys. Uh, Sweden gets the silver. Um, and for uh, the bronze, I got to stick with the, uh, the pesky fins there. Mm. You just can't count them out. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Peter, what do you got? Uh, gold, met, gold, silver, and bronze. 
Yeah. See, if it was Canada versus Sweden in this semifinal matchup, obviously not going to happen because of the the standings. But if it was Canada Sweden, I would have loved to see a Canada Finland final. But mm. we're not going to because that's not how it's going to play out. But um, Canada Sweden one two Canada gold Sweden silver and I, I i basically just got to copy devin <laughs> I, I i think czechia could give Finland a really good run so i wouldn't be surprised if they take mm. home the bronze but given the power that they have up front with finland and just how dominant in the over yarventi has been um how great of a two-way game that uh casper halton has been playing it's hard not to have Finland taking the bronze medal but also if they do if Czechia does take home the bronze it's also going to be because of as I mentioned before Michael Rabo who's been lights out good 192 goals against average and 944 save percentage of four games for Czechia so in in two games not four what am I looking at sorry about that but he's been he's been really good for them lights out in the crease so if they have a fighting chance it's going to be on his shoulders yeah, I'm gonna go with the same. I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna change. Uh, I would say Canada gold, Sweden silver, and uh, Finland for the bronze. Uh, but like you said, Czechia uh, could surprise. Uh, you never know. So, um, but I'm I'm gonna go with those three guys. Throw three teams as well. All right, let's reset the show before we get to our World Junior preview here, refresher type thing. Um, of course, this uh, show is being brought to you by the Morning Skate newsletter. And morning a newsletter brought to you every every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the Hockey Raiders. Uh, brought to you to your inbox. Uh, make sure you're checking that out. Uh, lots of great stuff in that every day, or almost every day now. Um, Kyle brings out great stuff with his team. Uh, very creative stuff, especially in a time where there's not much news. So definitely check out that newsletter. Sign up uh, in the link that's in the description below. All right, let's move on to our main part of the show, the World Juniors, uh, which is coming up. It's August 9th. Um, once we get together again, the tournament will be going on. So let's do a little bit of a preview or a refresher. I mean, uh, there's we did do a pretty big preview, uh, multiple episodes when it was actually supposed to be in December. Uh, we went through all the teams and stuff like that. We won't do that this time because, we, of course, we don't have the time. Um, but there, a lot of the rosters are pretty much the same. But let's start off with the guys that aren't there. I mean, there's there were guys that were named to this roster that um, decided not to go um, this time around with the postponed uh, tournament. Lots of big names. Amongst them, Owen Power, Shane Wright, Willie Macklin, Juraj Slavkovsky, Simone Nemitz. And there are a few other guys too, but those are the big guys. Peter, I'll start with you. Are you surprised slash disappointed uh, by any of these players that aren't going and we won't be able to see in August here? Yes and no. I mean, yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed. So we because we won't get to see some top names play. I mean, not necessarily that this is going to be their last chance, but who knows what's going to happen with their NHL future? They could crack the NHL roster and they may not get to play and represent their country. I mean, that's why that's why in all these tournaments, especially at this age range, it's the last one for them before they go pro because it's going to mean a lot to them. And you know, it, it really isn't all that surprising to see some of those top names not participate because of the fact that they got an NHL roster spot. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, you know, kind of catch 22 situation. If you want to <laughs> call it, you know, play or NHL. Yeah. <laughs> which was going to be a little bit more important at this point, but if they want to go further, I mean, if they would need to take the step back and, you know, prep for the season, not worry about injury, especially in the case of Owen power, Eklund, um, Sefkowski, Nemich, who have a fighting chance, maybe not so much if, but they want, they want to put their best foot forward. Yeah. Um, they want to make an impact. They want to make a statement to the team that drafted them and they want to be the reason why they're a part of their future. So yeah, a little bit disappointed that they're not going to be playing, but I understand why they're not going because of what can happen, especially with training camp being so close. I agree with that. Um, one thing I'll say, though, I mean, there are guys that like Mason McTavish. I mean, he's probably going to play in the NHL. Yeah. He's playing. Uh, Kent Johnson's another one. Um, most likely will be in the NHL. I mean, not guaranteed because he didn't look lights out when he did play at the end of the year. But um, there are guys that, that are there that aren't, you know, that will be in the NHL and they're here. So, I mean, it, it, it's a personal, I think it's a personal decision. A lot of these players on, you know, risking injury or playing, you know, wanting to be at their full strength. 
at training camp. So I definitely understand it too. Devin, you have anything to add to this? Are you surprised, disappointed with any of these guys that aren't going to be in this tournament? Yeah, I think you just brought up a really good point there, Matt, because on some level, yeah, I get it for guys like Owen Power and uh, Slavkovsky and them. It's they, they want to be able to put their best foot forward in training camp. You know, if something happens and they get injured, you know, then they, you know, that could set them back in a big way. So mm -hmm. uh, you kind of minimize risk that way. But at the same time, like you said, Mason McTavish is there. So is Kent Johnson. So is Simon Edmondson, all these guys that are also supposed to be uh, pushing for us for NHL spots are going. And so they're taking the risk. Um, so like you said, maybe it just comes down to personal preference. Maybe some teams, uh, really want these guys to do it. Others don't it's, it's who knows. Um, I'm disappointed on, uh, in specific cases, I would have loved to have seen Shane Wright at this tournament. Um, especially considering he lost that OHL year, uh, yeah. he slid to fourth overall. So there's obviously some questions about him in the, uh, in the league, I felt like this would have been a good opportunity for him to start silencing some haters. Um, yeah. But I guess we got to wait for training camp now for that to happen. Um, and even like Slavkovsky, who went first overall. Um, I, I don't think that uh, people are as definite about him making the NHL as they would be with other first overall picks. Um, and this would have been a good stage for him to uh, kind of, you know, get some momentum under his feet, basically. Uh, case by case, like I said, some players, I, I get it. Other players I would have liked to have seen. So am I disappointed? Yes. In some part, am I surprised? No, but also like you said, Matt, it's weird that some players are going and others aren't And it's, it's, so it's clearly not just one, uh, one case fits all sort of deal. Yeah. And I mean, some teams may have also said, you know, we don't want you going, um, yeah. because we don't mm -hmm. want to risk injury. I mean, that's, that could be the case too. So We'll see. We'll see how all that kind of plays out. But let's talk about because these countries aren't going to have these guys. Um, Devin, who's going to suffer the most without these players? I mean, there are there's probably an obvious one here, especially when two of their main guys aren't there. You probably know who I'm talking about. Um, but who, who do you think will have, will suffer the most um, by not having these guys? Well, I think without uh, uh, Slavkovsky and, and Nemitz, that's 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 going to hurt. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's kind of who you're thinking of, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would say even Canada, but like the thing with Canada is that they've got so much talent that even without Owen Power and Shane Wright, they still have plenty of guys that could uh, fill a role and play well. So I, I think it hurts to not have, you know, elite talent like Shane Wright and Owen Power. Of course it does, but at least there's enough behind them to where, uh, and what, that's still going to be on the roster to where I'm not as concerned as I would be with a, you know, the, uh, the, the checks. <laughs> um, I think, I think even, uh, to kind of, uh, hand pull one specific situation, I think the Americans are going to hurt because Drew Camesso is not going mm. and that was going to be their starter in that. Um, not to say that the guys that they are going to, uh, go to the tournament with can't get the job done, but I know that me personally, I felt a lot more confident with, you know, with Camesso going than I would with, you know, whoever else they're going to start with surprises happen. That's kind of what, you know, makes tournaments like this so much fun as you never know what can happen and guys come yeah. out of nowhere and steal the show but um that's one particular situation where i go ooh, i don't know if they're going to do as well as they might have in december they agreed on on us for sure they've got some no-name type no-name goalies and Barico <clears throat> played pretty well in the last comes with the under 18s i think he played really yeah. well in so you never know i i think he could potentially be a surprise um peter do you agree with that that, that slovakia that's going to suffer the most without these guys hundred percent. Yeah. And uh, like Devin said about us too, I agree the goaltending situation, even heading in the last uh, tournament in December, I was a little bit hesitant. And then we saw Drew Camesso play really well and then gets canceled. And now you're left uh, trying to find someone to be the starter. So it is going to be a big question mark, but yeah, Slovakia, no doubt, because let's face it. Um, so if Koski and Emmett have been really stand out for them or have really stood out for them mm -hmm. all season playing against stiffer competition. We saw them play in farewell at the Olympics, the world championship. We saw them go one, two. So there's a promise right there. And to have those two guys not there, it's definitely going to hurt. I mean, I, and even looking at their roster where they still need to make some cuts, I didn't even see Philip Mezar's name in there mm -hmm. as well. So 
obviously doesn't get enough attention as Slavkowski and Nemeth, but Mezar is a very feisty in your face kind of forward. So he would have been a thorn in some player sides as well. So not seeing him there is also going to be a really put a damper on things for Slovakia, but yeah, it, it, it is going to hurt them considering how well they played for them internationally previously and not seeing them at the top tournament is definitely going to be, you know, not something that we, a lot of us would like to see because, Hey, I'm, I, I have, I'm part Slovak. I want to see them play. I want to see them thrive. And it's a little bit disappointing in that regard, but Hey, yeah, is what it is. Uh, August, yeah. August hockey is <laughs> different. Uh, there's not, uh, <laughs> there's going to be different things happening. So let's talk about someone that is going to be there though. Um, we've mentioned him quite a bit on this show. Um, a guy named Connor Bedard. I'm, I'm, I don't know who that guy is. But, no, um, yeah. Connor I. Bedard. I, this guy has been on our radar for what? Two, three years now. Um, how much of an impact will he have on Team Canada? But now without Shane Wright, he's the main guy, or one of them, um, that everyone's going to want to watch. Um, Devin, what do you think? How much of an impact will Bedard have on Team Canada's chances at getting gold back? Because they didn't have it. They didn't win it last time. Well, I think if you're Team Canada, you hope he has a huge impact because, mm-hmm. um, you know, obviously he's kind of being heralded as like the next McDavid-esque prospect and uh with that um that title and with that you know sort of um reputation comes expectations and in this case the expectation is that he's going to show up and and kind of be canada's maybe best player and that's on a team that has mctavish that's a team that's um yeah gonna have a lot of nhl talent that's already drafted so um do i think he's gonna have a big uh impact i do because he has the talent to do it and i think that um in some cases, you know, a lot of these guys, when it comes to international tournaments, they actually do have a little bit of experience playing against each other. I think Bedard is, he's like the, he's the youngest kid on the roster. He's, he's, he's the one with, uh, with the least experience. If anyone on the team does have experience going, going against each other, he's kind of the wild card because yes, he has all these, uh, these expectations, but he's also, you know, he's the kid. Maybe he shows up and, and blows everybody out of the water and shows exactly what he is. Maybe he, uh, maybe he doesn't, I don't think he's, I don't think he's not going to show up. I think he's going to do very, very well, but you never know until you know. Um, so to answer the question, how much of an impact, uh, I think he's going to have a huge impact because if Bedard shows up well, I think Canada shows up well. And if he doesn't show up well, I think, uh, Canada is going to be in a little bit of trouble. Yeah. Um, Peter, you have anything to add? I mean, obviously you've talked about Connor Bedard quite a bit, uh, <laughs> being the head of prospects, lots of stuff already talked about him. Yeah. Um, what type of impact will he have with, with Team Canada? Yeah, I, I, I usually agree with Devin. I'm not, I'm not going to so much agree on the fact that if he doesn't show up, it's not going to be a big factor because of Canada's depth. But we've seen Connor Bedard excel at every single level. I mean, at the U18s in 21 – he was 16 years old, 14 points in seven games. And la- at the la- at the previous or the recent uh, U18s that just passed, Canada wasn't doing so well, and he was the only bright spot along with him and Adam Fantilli. So despite Canada not playing well, Connor Bedard still showed up and was Connor Bedard. Seven points in four games, six goals. And even being on the, the youngest player before the cancellation, he had five points in two games. You can say that most of them came – with that four goal performance, but at the same time, he's taking advantage of the opportunities and he was a third 13th forward on that team. And he rose up to gain more meaningful minutes. So I'm not worried at all that if he doesn't perform well, it's like going to be an issue because of Canada's depth, but not seeing Connor Bedard, you know, rise up and play exceptionally well, just doesn't sound like Connor Bedard. He's going to put his best foot forward and he's going to make an impact no matter what. Uh, yeah. Real quick, I, I think you made a really good point there about him being the 13th forward and then rising up and really, yeah. because, you know, going back to December, there was kind of a will he, won't he, yeah. you mm-hmm. know, maybe seniority he makes kind the of team. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And then he, mm-hmm. he emphatically made the team. There was no way they were going to leave him off. That's, that is kind of Bedard. Um, and that's what they're expecting to see out of him next week. 
Yeah, I have no doubt. I think he's going to be a big, big part of this team. I mean, and that he's already he's shown it many times. Uh, when you think uh, he's not going to be, he is. So uh, I, I'm, I'm no doubt that he's going to be really good. All right, let's talk about other guys that have not named Connor Bedard. I mean, there's lots of guys in this tournament. Um, so, Peter, who is the player that you're the most excited to watch? Uh, one or two guys uh, quickly that you are really um, looking forward to seeing. I'm going to go back to Slovakia. And even though there's no Slavkovsky or Nemec, I am going to go with Dalibor Dvorsky. Um, this is another top name for this year's uh, NHL draft, possibly top five, I, more or less top five, I think, at this point. Extremely crafty, great hands, great playmaking abilities, great shot. I know Slovakia is going to be in tough, but I think Dvorsky is going to be a bright spot for them. And he's going to display a skill set, even though if Slovakia doesn't get far, he's going to be a bright spot for them. That's 100% sure or certain. Certain, I can't speak right now. Sorry. As for the second one, the second player I'm going to highlight, and I was kind of surprised that he was left off the first time. I thought he would have made the team have that going back to that GTHL combination with Shane Wright is Brennan Othman. And raise your hand if you heard me talk about Brennan Othman before <laughs> on this show, because, hey, I, I've been on his hype train since last year, since the GTHL. I was on his hype train in his draft year. I'm still on his hype train. Uh, he can score in many different ways. He's in your face. He plays with a bit of a bite and edge. And I honestly think that the New York Rangers got something special on him. And the fact that he's made the team this time around Shows that, you know, he made an impression given how he was left off the roster, how they're, they needed to fill a spot. I had no doubt that Othman was going to be one of those names and he made the team. So those are my two right there. Yeah, I'm not surprised you mentioned Othman. <laughs> 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 uh, we know you, you like that guy. Devin, uh, who do you got as the guy that's a couple guys uh, that you're looking forward to seeing in this tournament? Well, let's start in Sweden. I'm going to say uh, Jesper Wallstead to start. Uh, and first of all, there's kind of a low key expectation that he's going to be the best goalie at the tournament because he's already kind of built up that pedigree around him. Most people would tell you that he should have been the first goalie off the board in uh, the 2021 draft. Obviously he was not. Um, and since then he's, he's had another really strong season over there in Sweden and he's set to uh start his North American career this year. So I am low key hoping to see him uh, have a really good tournament and uh, kind of announce himself as well. He's already announced himself, but to really cement himself as a top goaltending prospect in the world. Um, and I think that if Sweden goes on to win, I think a lot of it will be due to the goaltending that Wolstead uh, provides. So really eager to see how he performs and how, how well he performs basically is what I'm going for there. And then the other guy I want to highlight, we've kind of already talked about him a little bit, uh, is Mason McTavish. And the reason why I'm excited to see Mason McTavish is two reasons. One, there's uh, we talked about all the guys that aren't going to be at the tournament. And a lot of those guys aren't going to be at the tournament because, you know, we're talking about how they need to be ready for NHL training camp. A lot of those guys are going to be Calder candidates, or at least they're kind of going in with the expectation that they should be Calder candidates, looking at Owen Power and others. Uh, I think Mason McTavish has an opportunity to be a Calder candidate this year. And uh, when you, when you talk about, when you talk about a player like that, you kind of uh, expect him to be one of the best players at the tournament. And I fully expect Mason McTavish to be one of the best players at the tournament. He plays a, uh, he plays a pro game. He, he already does. He, he could have stuck with the NH. He could have stuck in the NHL last year. I have no doubts about it. Was it the best thing for his development? No. And that's why they sent him back. But I do think he could have, uh, he could have stuck around. Um, and he's going to be the captain for team Canada. Uh, obviously the Canadians are expecting him to lead by example and uh, play a good 200 foot game. I think he's perfectly capable of that. And um, he's going to kind of provide that. I guess that insulation for lack of better words for Connor Bedard to do what Connor Bedard does, because McTavish can probably take on, the the uh the grunt work you know the the uh the tough um matchups and such and probably still come out ahead leaving bedard to feast on lesser competition maybe it goes the other way around maybe they send you know maybe other teams send their their big guns against bedard because they're gonna have to but either way i'm expecting mctavish to feast and uh I, i'm looking forward to watching it 
Well, yeah, yeah, I agree with that. McTavish is a guy that definitely could have played in the NHL last year. Every time I see him, I'm like, why is an NHL player playing? Yeah, because <laughs> <Yep. laughs> he sure looks like an NHL player. Uh, yeah. He doesn't look his age, that's for sure. Um, so uh, he's going to be an exciting guy to watch, not just now, but in the NHL next season too. So um, the Ducks have a, you know, they, they have Getzlaff retire and they get this guy coming in and they have Zegris too. I mean, geez, <laughs> what, what a one, two punch that that's pretty good. All right. Let's, uh, let's go to some predictions now. Um, I mean, we did this earlier. I mean, there there's, but there's, there's different teams now. I mean, there's a different circumstances. So we'll do this again. Um, mm-hmm. Who will win gold, silver, and bronze at the World Juniors here? I'll start with you, Peter. Uh, what are your predictions for the end of this tournament? Um, I think it's going to be Canada gold, Sweden silver, and I think Finland's going to take home the bronze. Kind of re- sounds repetitive <laughs> with the Helenka Gretzky right there, but um, that's the matchup that we want to see. We want to, I mean, Canada is, you know, going in with the expectation that despite losing some names, they still got a deep team. Same with Sweden. Um, I think both are going to be evenly matched heading in. Um, Dylan Grand may not have the same type of label as Jesper Wallstedt, but you know, we all thought that Sebastian Costa was going to be a starter and lo and behold, Grand was, and he ran away with it. So I think this is his job to lose. And I think Grand's going to put up really stellar numbers and a great performance for team Canada. Yeah, that that's, uh, that's some solid predictions there. I think there's <laughs> those three teams are going to be really strong. Devin, are you going with the same three there or are you uh, going to pick a couple, uh, a few different ones? Well, I'm going with, uh, the same three, but I'm going to flip the top two. I'm going to say Sweden wins it because Wallstead is a brick wall. Mm-hmm. Uh, Canada goes sec, gets the silver, and then Finland rounds out the top three and wins the bronze. There we go. I'm, I'm going to go the same. I'm going to say Sweden's going to win the gold. I'm sorry, Canada. You're not going to be able to get your gold medal back. But um, I just think, yeah, I agree with the same thing. I think Wallstead's just going to be uh, stellar in this tournament. Uh, He's already shown a Minnesota got such a steal where they got yes, him. They sure. mm-hmm. um, so he's going to be exciting to watch. And I think he's going to be a big difference maker in this. Um, so I'm going to go with uh, Canada going silver, Sweden, the, the gold, and then uh, bronze. I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say Finland too, because I think, I think Finland uh, does have a pretty good team uh, coming back for this world juniors. And, um, I think they, they have a strong enough team to get uh, that bronze medal, especially without a superpower like Russia in there, um, yeah. for sure. So I'm going to go with Finland as a bronze medalist there, for sure. All right, let's get to some awards. Uh, let's go start with the best defenseman. Uh, we'll start there. Um, Peter, who do you have as your best defenseman uh, winning that here? Is um, Namella going to get it again? <laughs> <laughs> um i i would like to i would like to see that happen but um you, you know it's it's gonna be really tough i mean i i, I probably would have said owen power but then again owen power is not there but you know what <laughs> i think Devin's gonna like me for this i'm probably gonna say simon evanson <laughs> um you know he, he similar to like the development for more cider he just continuously to get better and better and better and we were seeing glimpses of that in the last tournament, I think right now with the whole season under his belt, heading into next season, a little bit more mature, a little bit more rounded defensively. And obviously his mobility is the biggest asset. I think he's going to stand out as one of the top defensemen in this tournament. So I, I would give him the award. All right, Simon Evanson, one vote for him. Uh, Devin, uh, who do you have? Are you going with Evanson or you got someone else? If this was uh, back in... December, January, I would have told you Jake Sanderson was going to be the winner. He's not going to be there. So I'm going to go with Simon Edvinson as well. Um, I, I expect Edvinson to have a really strong tournament um, just as an individual, you know, we're expecting him to push hard for a roster spot in Detroit in training camp. And I think that starts with a really strong world junior tournament. So I'm going to say Edvinson as well. I'm going to make it a three, uh, clean sweep here i'm going with edmondson too because he's probably the best defenseman in this tournament at this point and uh he's an i still i i think he's an nhl defenseman um he's mm-hmm. got the size he's got the smarts we've talked about him many times in this show and on grind line all that stuff so 
Um, if you don't know about them yet, um, you're not you watching will. enough of our shows. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I think he's going to win the, the award as well. All right, let's get to best forward. I mean, we probably have all the same name here too, maybe. Um, lots of great names here. Devin, who do you got as the best forward? I'm going to, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say Mason McTavish. And the only reason why is because I think uh, like, like, like I said, when I was talking about him in the last segment, I think, I think he's going to play a lot of important minutes. And I think he's going to mm-hmm. be a, uh, a real, like I said, important player, but he's also going to be like a real, uh, real leader for that Canadian team. I think he's going to be, he's going to have a real standout before a real standout tournament before joining the ducks. All right. Mason McTavish, uh, Peter, who do you got as the best forward? I am going to say Kent Johnson. Um, really, really, I mean, similar to McTavish, both played uh, at the Olympics. Kent Johnson played at the World Championship. Has a lot of senior competition under his belt, similar to McTavish. But I think that, you know, he's just got to, not necessarily saying that McTavish doesn't have a lot of dynamicism to his game because he does. It's just Kent Johnson seemed to have, seemed to have another gear at that tournament before it was canceled again, not saying that McTavish didn't, it's just that I, I thought that he was more noticeable. I thought I, I was drawn to him every single time, both have the hands. So both have the skill set. but I, I, th- I think Ken Johnson really is going to be determined, especially missing out on gold. The last time I think he's going to be really more motivated this time around to put his best foot forward be the dynamic playmaking centerman that, you know, the Columbus Blue Jackets drafted in him. And I think he's going to have a hell of a tournament right now. Yeah. Those two are great picks. I'm going to go and say Connor Bedard. I, I just, I, this guy is just amazing. Yeah. And I think Not he's going to answer. dominate. Yeah. I think I'm going to yeah. dominate this tournament. <laughs> uh, and yeah. So Connor Bedard, and I hope that this happens is Jonathan LeCaramacchi uh, as well yeah. Um, ha- yeah. is in that conversation. Because I would love to see a Canucks draft pick uh, dominate this tournament. Because I haven't seen that since Cody Hodgson way back when, uh, when he was uh, I think the second or first. I think he led the tournament in scoring, and then Tavares goes and wins everything. But there's, there's um, a name I yeah. forgot about. Holy cow! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was the last one time I believe that everyone was t- so excited with the Canucks draft pick in the World Juniors. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's get to the back at half here and start talking about the guy that the guys that are going to be stopping the puck, the best goaltender. Uh, we probably have the same name. We've talked about this guy already. I'm sure. Um, Peter, who you got as the best goaltender? Yeah. Westberg Wallstadt. <laughs> there you go. Devin, <laughs> same name. The guy with the word wall in his name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised that's not a nickname for him. Already. I, I don't guy, know. Maybe it the is guy a... with Walt in his name. That is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go yes for Walt's head as well. If so, I was uh, him, sweep. <laughs> if I was him, I would change my first name to Brick. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that that would, that would work very well. Uh, yes for Brick Wallstead. <laughs> This is middle name. There you go. Um, <laughs> Wild fans, you've got you've got your uh, your Nick goaltender because he's going to be a heck of one in the NHL when he gets oh yeah here, uh, for sure. All right, let's get to an MVP. Um, this could be the best forward. It could be the same, but uh, it could also be a goaltender. Uh, so, uh, what do you have, Devin? Uh, MVP. Well, when I said that the Swedes were going to win the win the uh, the gold, it was because Jesper Wallstead was a was a wall for them. So I'm going to go ahead and say Wallstead is the uh, MVP, and he's going to have right. to be if he's going to slow down the Canadians. Yes, yeah, mm-hmm. he's going to have to do that for sure. Um, Peter, who do you have as, an, have as an MVP? Yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say Connor Bedard. I mean, yeah, I know I picked Ken Johnson as a, my top forward, but you know what? To see Bedard at 17 years old come into this tournament and possibly dominate just like he has at every other level of competition screams MVP to me. So that's that's my reasoning. Yeah, I'm going to agree and say Connor Bedard as an MVP as well. He's going to take the MVP, take the best forward, and uh, not a lot, of pr- so not just not put pressure on the guy, but uh, <laughs> yeah. he's capable of doing it. Uh, he's just. <laughs> It just comes naturally to him, it seems. And, yeah. uh, you know, winning the W or almost getting into that conversation of being the top WHL scorer 
um, it was amazing in itself. So I, Bedard's going to have a heck of a tournament. He's going to take the home those two awards for sure. All right, let's do an all-star team now. Um, Devin, uh, who do you have as part of the all-star team? So that would be three forwards, two defensemen, and a goaltender. Well, now we're now we're we're gonna have some fun here. Uh, <laughs> three forwards. Uh, I gotta do. I gotta do McTavish. I said he was gonna be the top forward. Uh, if I wasn't gonna say McTavish, I was gonna say kind of Bedard. So there's your second forward, and I'm gonna go ahead and say Liam Ogren for the third forward. I think he could have himself a really good tournament. Um, you know, I, I think, I think we talked about this a few weeks ago after the draft. I really love that pick from Minnesota. Mm. Speaking of Minnesota prospects. Yeah, so more, <laughs> oh yeah. Um, defensemen, we're going to go ahead and say Simon Edvinson and Topi Nimala. Uh, I think, you know, Edvinson's going to be a top defenseman and I expect Nimala to have a good uh, tournament as well. And then the goalie, the guy, with the, <laughs> the, the guy with the word wall in his name. That's, that's good. That's, I'm going to refer to him as that from now on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Peter, who's your all-star team? Yeah, the guy with the wall in his name as my goaltender. Evanson and Nimala, I, I think both are going to be proven very strong defensive. And I, I wouldn't count out Brock Faber just yet mm, on yeah, Team USA. I agree. Um, mm. Granted, I don't think USA is going to go far, but I, I think that he's still going to be really, really good for them on defense to lead that team. Speaking um, of Minnesota prospects. Yeah, yeah speaking one. of Minnesota prospects, yeah. <laughs> I, I was about to say, yeah, he, tr- he got traded away to from LA. I completely yeah. not forgot about that, but so much has happened. But um, yeah, so though uh Nimala and Emmons Edvinson as my defense, and as for the forwards, I am going to say Lakaramaki McTavish Bedard as my top like three that. forwards. For so that'll like be that. my my all-star team. <laughs> I like the Lakaramaki one, that's for mm-hmm. sure. All right, I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna say with Lacare Mackey there. I think he he's gonna be so one of my forwards. So I'm gonna go Lacare Mackey, Bedard, and uh, Mason McTavish as my three there. Uh, defenseman uh, Simon Evanson, and I'm gonna go with Olin Zellweger. Uh, ooh, coming ooh, off his injury, ooh, I like. I like. I, I think he could still um, low key. He did he did that in the under 18s. Everyone didn't expect him to mm-hmm. to come and be an offensive guy. So. I think he's going to be there uh, on the all-star team there and then goaltender walls. So <laughs> that's, a, that's an easy one. Um, so that, that's my all-star team. Okay. Before we end the show, let's do some final quick hits. These are going to be quick. So we'll do that same thing we do on the grind line, only one or two sentences. You say two sentences, right? Yeah. Yeah. Max. Yep. So max two sentences on the, <laughs> this one first won't be easy because it's just saying how many points. So, uh, Peter, how many points will Connor Bedard finish with at the World Juniors? I want to say minimum 10, max 15, because anything is possible with Connor Bedard. There you go. Uh, Devin, who, how many points for Bedard? Well, in Connor McDavid's year, he did this. He had 11 points in seven games. So I'm going to go ahead and say 12 points for Connor Bedard. I'm going to go with 15. Uh, 15 Ooh. points. Uh, <laughs> go a little higher i said i went crazy with the point totals in his, uh, in his two <laughs> for next year so uh got to keep it going why not <laughs> why not but he's capable i think he really is capable of doing it because uh, whoever's going to get that guy's going to be in... uh, I, I i hope it's not a team that i'm i'm uh the Canucks play a lot. So <laughs> ready <laughs> have we have Connor McDavid to deal with so it's, okay. it's going to be Seattle inexplicably. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Beneers, oh, Bedard, and Wright. Right. <laughs> no, God. come on. Matthew Beneers <laughs> is going to be your third line center. Come on. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Imagine that. All right. Uh, next question Pick an underdog team that might surprise with a win over a superpower. There's always one of those teams that always is like, what? Why are they winning? Um, Devin, who do you have as an underdog that could potentially win against one of those big teams? Uh, I'm going <laughs> to go ahead and say either Germany. I, Germ, the Germans always seem to, uh, even when even in losing efforts, they like put up a good fight. They, they show well for themselves. So I could see the Germans uh, sneaking out a, a sneaky win. Or even... Uh, you know, we talked about how they're not going to have uh, 
Slavkovsky or Nemitz, but I could see Slovakia sneaking in a win against mm-hmm. uh, against a team that's maybe taking them a little uh, taking them as an easy easy win. Um, so yeah, Germany or Slovakia, two solid picks for sure. Um, Peter, underdog team that might surprise uh, over superpower. Yeah, Slovakia. I mean, even even without their top two stars, I think they're still going to put up a really great performance. They're they play with a bit of an edge and bite, so I think they're going to have they're going to have their work cut out. But I think they're going to be able to keep up with some of the top names. Yeah, uh, for sure. I'm going to go with Switzerland. Uh, they always seem to do something. They were pretty good in the la- in the you know before it got canceled. They were winning some games. So I mm-hmm. uh, I think Switzerland could surprise. They are missing uh, some guys. Um, big big ones. Leon Bichsel, Bichsel because uh, he's not he's not there. Uh, he's our big defenseman. So uh, that that may hurt them. But I think they could definitely surprise. They always seem to do do something at least tournaments. <laughs> <laughs> uh, win a game that they're not supposed to. So, all right. Final question. This one is away from the World Juniors, away from that, but it's still uh, relevant going into the next season. Super early Calder Trophy favorite. Peter, what do you have? I know we 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 probably touched on this previously before, and I think I may have said a different name, and I'm going to choose a different name. This time around, I can't remember who I said last time, but I'm picking Matty Beniers as rookie of the year, mainly because of the fact that it comes over after signing his ELC puts up nine points in 10 games. Mm -hmm. That is just the beginning for Matty Beniers. So he's going to have a really solid season and Seattle with him as the number one center still may not go far, but I really like him as the top rookie. Yeah, I love Mandy Veneers, as you may know from this show and the uh, prospect uh, profile I did on him. So uh, that's a definite, <laughs> definite for sure. Uh, Devin, who do you have as a Calder Trophy favorite? Uh, so early, very early. Yeah, I'll say Veneers as well. I think, uh, like Peter said, he showed really well for himself in his brief time with Seattle, and he should uh, be in a position to continue with that success. So I'm, I'm going to stick with Veneers. Seattle's got a good team this year, I think. I mean, they've got yeah, a few, yeah. they've, they've improved. Uh, if all their guys kind of go, I think, especially with their goaltending, if their goaltending's better, I think they're, they've they got a chance. So I'm going to make a clean sweep and go with Matty Beniers as well. I think, uh, and, and second one is Mason McTavish. I think he's going to yeah. be, I can yeah. pick two yeah. on yeah. the host. Um, so I, I'm going to go with Matty Beniers and Mason McTavish as two guys I, are going to be in that running for sure. I, I can, can I throw out a quick hit real quick, real, real quick here before we go? Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, a, I guess it's kind of a two-parter. A, do you think Shane Wright plays with the Kraken? And B, if he does, is Shane Wright and Matty Beniers the Moritz Sider and Lucas Raymond of next season? Peter, I'll let you answer that one first. Uh, a, I don't. I think he'll get like maybe that nine game tryout maybe gets five games, but I don't think he'll play the full season. But I think at some point you can put that label of Raymond and Cider on Beniers and Wright as well, because they're both of them were dynamic for Detroit and both of them are going to be dynamic for Seattle. I'm going to go with, yeah, I think Shane Wright is going to play the whole season in Seattle. I think he's going to be, you know, everyone's underestimating him Mm -hmm. now because he wasn't first overall. And I think he's going to come out and try to prove that right off the bat. And if Seattle thinks that he's ready to play in the NHL, which I think he is, um, because of his two-way game, mm-hmm. I think both those guys are going to be playing um, all year and uh, probably going to be in that conversation for the Calder most of the year and that Calder tracker, which I'll be doing again next year. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, he's they're going to both be talked about for sure. Uh, because, like I said, if they think he's ready, I think he's playing, um, especially with the team they're trying to get to be more exciting and uh, not be at the bottom of the standings again. So. Uh, we will see how all that plays out, and we'll talk about it, obviously. We may have jinxed veneers because we did that with Cole Caulfield, so I hope that we did <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> we regretting that like, now. Yeah, regretting that now. <laughs> so, uh, Sorry, Maddie. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> um, well, it's a different situation, though, uh, with yeah. veneers. I think I think it's different. Much. For sure. For sure. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll be talking about this all year uh, on this show. Um, <laughs> as we get into season two of prospect corner, um, which we're rounding out our season one, which is pretty amazing. Uh, we've almost done a year of this. I think we started this show at the end of August. Um, Devin, you've been here half, 
half the way um, replaced Greg, but um, great to I'm gonna have you for a whole second season. So that's yeah. uh, that's gonna be awesome. And that does it for another episode of the Prospect Corner. Thanks for joining us again and uh, for tuning in every every time we're on here and uh, talking prospects. So thanks so much, everyone. Um, make sure you're checking out that uh, Morning Skate newsletter down at morningskate.io. Um, description, it's in the description below the link. Uh, put in your email. It'll come right to your inbox every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. It'll go right back to Monday to Friday once uh, the regular season starts. And um, of course, check out all our stuff on hockeywriters.com. There's stuff going on all off season long, even though there's not much news. There's lots of features. Uh, World Juniors coverage will be we'll be doing the same coverage as we did as we do uh, in December. So check all that out. And um, from Matthew Zator, um, Peter Barakini, and Devin Little, this has been the Prospect Corner.